December 19th of last year, Proxmox Server Solutions released Proxmox Data Center Manager Alpha. As soon as I had PDM installed, I could tell this was going to be something great. Proxmox looked like it was getting its own vCenter server-like management system. It has nearly been a year since the initial alpha release of PDM, so I think it's time we check in, see how development is going, and if it still feels like PDM will be the game changer I hoped it would be. Hey there, home lovers, self hosters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here. Last month in mid September, the beta version of PDM became available. The milestone for PDM came with a lot more functionality early support for Proxmox Backup Server, and an OS upgrade to Debian Trixie, as we've seen for PVE, PBS, and so on. Back when the alpha of PDM came out, I was blown away by what I was seeing. I've been pretty vocal on my criticisms of the PVE user interface and its jumbled mess of menus, submenus, and so on. I even made a video where I redesigned the UI to be a way I think it could have been better. Anyway, in the alpha of PDM, I felt like I was seeing Proxmox Server Solutions signaling they understood that PVE itself was missing something. A more streamlined, user-friendly, centralized management console like what users of vCenter had from VMware, Fleet Manager from Scale Computing, and also what users of Prism Central have from Nutanix, and I was excited. So let's take a look at the beta, see what's changed, see what's going on and what's new, and how I feel about the direction it's taking. Let's get to it. Let's start with an overview of what PDM actually is for those of you who don't know. Proxmox Data Center Manager is a centralized, multi-site management layer for the Proxmox ecosystem. It's designed to unify management of multiple independent Proxmox clusters under one interface. Think of it as Proxmox's answer to VMware vCenter, Scale Computing's Fleet Manager, and Nutanix Prism Central. Its core functionality includes a remote management layer for connecting to multiple independent Proxmox clusters using the same REST API as the local GUI. It's not meant to replace local PVE management. Instead, PDM pulls metadata, metrics, and status to display a unified view. For now, most actions are read-only. This includes viewing inventory, metrics, status, SDN visualizations, and so on. Though with each updated release, more write and administrative actions are added. PDM uses tokens for authentication between itself and the remotes. Using API tokens over root credentials maintains separation of privilege and enhanced security. PDM now features role-based access control, which was added in the beta. RBAC is a welcome addition as it allows administrators to manage per-user access for what admins and users can see and do in PDM. And lastly, PDM features visibility and some management over SDN. The beta now features eVPN-based overlay networks that can span clusters to allow cross-site VM communication. We'll touch on that in a moment. PDM sits above Proxmox VE, Proxmox Backup Server, and eventually Proxmox Mail Gateway. It's not meant to replace the individual management of those systems. It's more designed to aggregate and orchestrate across all of them from a single management interface. With the background out of the way, let's get to the changes and feature enhancements in the beta. Let's start with the foundation first. The alpha version of PDM ran on Debian Bookworm, which was, at the time, what all of the Proxmox ecosystem ran on. With the beta release of PDM came the update to Debian Trixie, putting it in line with the most recent upgrades to PVE, PBS, and PMG. The biggest enhancement to arrive to PDM is eVPN-based SDN between clusters. eVPN, for those of you who haven't heard of it before, stands for Ethernet VPN, which is a modern Layer 2 and Layer 3 VPN technology that uses BGP to advertise MAC and IP address information between network devices. It enables efficient, scalable, and flexible multi-tenant Ethernet services across data centers, wide area networks, or service provider networks. With this enhancement, you'll be able to manage overlay networks that span different sites directly from the PDM UI. This turns PDM from just a dashboard into the start of a real multi-site orchestrator. Search has gotten a big boost in the beta version of PDM as well. PDM now allows you to use GitHub-style filters in the search query to easily narrow down your searches. For example, let's say you want to search across all remotes that are added to PDM to find every workload that's running. From the main dashboard, you can type in plus status colon running and see all active workloads across all remotes broken down by the host they're currently running on. Or let's say you just want to narrow down to just active LXC workloads. You can type in plus type colon LXC and you get the same list of just the LXC workloads. And when you click on any items in the list, you get detailed information immediately in the main window pane for the item you selected. Seems minor, I know, but when you consider scaling up to multiple clusters with multiple nodes, finding workloads based on a specific criterion becomes a big value add and a major time saver. What's next? 
Behind the scenes, the beta of PDM has seen big updates to performance and metrics. As previously mentioned, the alpha version of PDM sequentially pulled each host for its metrics. So if you had a lot of nodes added, you might be waiting for your graphing and metrics to update depending on which node you're looking at. In the beta version, PDM pulls all remote metrics concurrently, removing the wait time and providing a more real-time graphing experience. They've also improved overall performance in graph draw time, giving the UI a much snappier feel when clicking on items in the list. And the last big advancement is the ability to now select adjustable timescales for all graphed metrics collected. You can choose between hour, day, week, month, year, and even decade timescales, and you can resize the graph based on maximum and average. PDM Beta also adds Linux PSI metrics from your Proxmox VE9 hosts, so you can actually see when your clusters are under resource pressure even before they max out. It's a more intelligent way to catch performance bottlenecks and a welcomed addition to the overall metrics and graphing improvements. Now let's take a look at the dashboard improvements. The beta version also sees changes to the PDM dashboard as well. We now have a card showing the status of all cluster jobs in the last 48 hours, a card for failed tasks listed by remote in the last 48 hours, and a new SDN zone card providing overall states of the SDNs of your clusters and remotes. If we swing over to a remotes dashboard, we now have an update tab that allows us to manage updates for a particular node. Here you can upgrade all waiting packages for a single node with just a single click. It's a nice feature add that further removes your need to head over to the PVE nodes UI itself to do routine tasks. There are a few other GUI improvements like refined icons and clearer status indicators. Everything looks cleaner, runs better, and is easier to read. I'm happy that they've added the ability to update nodes directly from PDM. That's a good start. However, I'd really like to see a dedicated section for managing updates across all nodes and clusters instead. If you have a lot of nodes in your cluster, being able to manage updates from one place is the right way to do it, versus on individual nodes themselves. The beta also brings the ability to add Proxmox backup server to PDM. Now, don't get too excited. This is very early, and other than metrics collection and graphing, there's nothing else to it. Even though PDM currently only provides performance and storage metrics, as a data nerd, I'm excited to have them. We're winding down here on the improvements, and there are a few more things I'd like to mention. They've improved localization for PDM by adding over 25 more languages, which is great. They've expanded the PDM CLI for more scriptable and automatable actions, and they've made adding remotes much easier. So let's get to my thoughts on the beta of PDM. Overall, I'm really excited to see where this is going. You guys know I have a personal grudge against the PVE UI. If I could not spend any time in the Proxmox GUI, I wouldn't. PDM is really starting to take shape, and I'm still incredibly happy with their UI UX efforts. I do hope they create a unified and focused updater for PDM that brings complete updating to all nodes and clusters under a single section. Platforms like vCenter allow you to build groups of hosts and clusters that you can target updates to, validate node configurations we're following to find baselines, and automate the entire update Update process with workload migrations and more, making it transparent to users and never interrupting the business. I really hope that's something that's coming for PDM as well. I will say that now we're in the beta, I'm not sure I understand why Proxmox Server Solutions is prioritizing the features in the order that they're doing. For example, the release of eVPN and the enhancements to SDN are great and definitely needed to get clusters to communicate across long distances. But I'm not sure why they're out now versus, say, node and cluster management. For example, you can only start, stop, and migrate workloads, and that's it. You can't make any functional configuration changes to those workloads, and I'm not sure why that's not completed before the more complex features like eVPN SDN. Ultimately, for PDM to be a true value-add competitor to vCenter, Hypercore Fleet Manager, or Prism Central, it's gonna need to be feature complete and be able to provide not just visibility, but also configuration and management. This is only the first beta, and I'm super happy with their efforts this far. Keep up the great work. And that, friends, will do it for this video. If you liked it, throw us a sub and a like, get in the comments if you have something to say, and we'll see you on the next one.